What's up everyone? As most of you probably know, Young Kiv looked to have the most explosive passing offense at the Madden Challenge Tournament as he rampaged to a 3-0 start in his group while posting a perfect 158.33 QBR in the process. Now all of this changed in a single elimination match against Joel where he was held to a 62.65 QBR and turned the ball over for the first time all tournament where he threw 3 interceptions. A lot of this loss in efficiency uh, can be attributed to Joel coming out and pretty much playing stock cover one robber out of the dollar formation which probably caught young Kiv off guard a little bit. Now. A quick shout out to AO Vinny and Damian Walker for suggesting to look at Joel's defense. Definitely keep the suggestions coming guys. So the first example here of how cover one can just be fickle and man to man in general is actually going to be a dot from Young Kiv to the corner route out of Bunch Trail to the wide side of the field. So you take a look at Joel's defensive setup and you see he's out in dollar. It's going to be that cover one robber and you see the base align press alignment. So what you're going to get is this outside corner is going to be on Keenan Allen, slot corner going to be on Garcon, and Joel's actually going to be using this linebacker. Eifert's going to be covered by the weak side linebacker. But what you want to focus on is going to be this corner route from Pierre Garçon. And it's actually going to be kind of counterintuitive because you would expect that slot cornerback who's manning up Pierre Garçon, he's got the outside leverage. Garçon's running that corner route. It's a good corner route out of Bunch Trail, but that Garçon item doesn't have the 91 or above route running, so he's not going to get a ton of separation on that cut. So you would think, okay, that corner might actually keep up with Garçon and be able to make a play, but you're going to see at the snap of the ball motion out to Keenan Allen. He's got really good outside leverage on the outside shoulder. Garcon makes the cut. The corner actually keeps running downfield and kind of stutter steps. You see right there, it's got to change his direction. Garcon creates a lot of separation and Kiv delivers a nice dot for a gain of 24. Now fast forward to the second quarter of that game and you're essentially going to see the same setup for Kiv on offense, gun bunch to the wide side of the field on the left going to be looking for that corner route from Garcon out of the bunch trail. Defense cover one once again from Joel, but if you notice now he doesn't base align and only presses. Now, logically last time the cornerback that's above Garcon already had, you know, probably like two or three steps of outside leverage pre-snap on that corner route and he still wasn't able to keep up. So logically now that he doesn't have that same outside leverage and as you're actually going to see as the play rolls, he actually gets inside leverage off the jam. He's on his right shoulder with that inside leverage. So last time with outside leverage, Garcon got open. This time with inside leverage, you would think the same would happen. He'd even get maybe more wide open than he did last time. But that's just not going to be the case right here. Garcon on the corner route, you see the cut. The defender keeps up with him stride for stride. And that's just what makes man-to-man -man defense fickle is that it's not seen very often and the interactions can just kind of be weird sometimes. And the other thing is now Kiv with this man-to-man -man defense essentially out of this gun bunch offense you have a lot of flat routes like the motion out or motion out out route to keenan allen this time he actually did put his tight end on a slant route that did a good job of being covered by the man-to-man -man defender the in route for ty hilton on the right side of the field is blanketed by the man-to-man -man defender so a lot of these corner strike setups and bunch trail and whatnot have only you know one or two possible reads against man-to-man -man coverage depending on who your opponent's user covering and then if they don't do a good job of getting open on the separation you're kind of screwed so right here Kiv is forced to try and thread the needle on the sideline here Garcon with the possession catch but the, the defender's there to knock the ball loose as soon as he gets his hands on it and it results in an incompletion so you saw right there two plays basically the same setup the only difference was the baseline from Joel one play he gets wide open, the next play the defenders all over him. Now this is actually going to be a play that I wish Kiv would have gone back to a little more and it's the 5-1-8 hook out of the Pats playbook. And basically what you're going to see is Keenan Allen's going to be running this deep like Z-spot pros from last year and it's going to do a great job of getting that separation against the man-to-man -man coverage especially since Joel has now base aligned and this is the defender that's going to be tasked with card and Keenan Allen. So not only is he already like 10 yards to the outside of him, but Keenan Allen with that 91 route running going to run that route very, very quickly and he's going to get that separation. So what that does is it forces Joel's user to have to guard that route. Now, whenever you're able to force your opponent's user to guard a certain route and be in a certain area of the field that you know he has to be in, that opens up all the other routes on your offense 
and that's what you're going to see. Now, a lot of people, what they'll do is they'll go ahead and put Pierre Garçon's receiver uh, right here on a little hitch route and basically use him as a playmaker option to where he can go right or left or up wherever the defense basically isn't. And that's what a lot of people do out of this play. So you have the deep post, the playmaker hitch, and then T.Y. Hilton streaks for a clear out. You go ahead and max protect. Now, right here, however, Kiv actually goes with an out route out of the backfield to Chris Thompson. And what this does is it actually messes up his playmaker attempt. He looks to playmaker Pierre Garçon, but as you see right there on the Y receiver underneath, the playmaker circle comes up. So now Garçon's not going to be able to move. He's going to be blanketed on that hitch route that really does nothing if it's not playmakered against man-to-man -man coverage. You see Joel knows where he needs to be. He's already deep in the middle of the field running stride for stride. You have to stay on that X route basically the entire time he's crossing the field. But right there, Kiv with the botched playmaker ends up having to throw the ball away. I think he could have had some success with that play purely based off the fact that it dictated where Joel's user had to be. And then maybe he could have branched out and tried to get some receivers open, you know, over the middle by the use of, you know, drag slants, the playmaker hitch, stuff like that. Now, a little later in that second quarter, Kiv's going to go with a play called Pat Sale. And basically what makes this play pretty good is this backside post route from that receiver that does a good job of getting open in different windows against a variety of different coverages. And the way a lot of people like to supplement that route is they'll go with a motion out drag route, which is exactly what Kiv's going to do to create a high low over the middle. You have a clear out streak from this receiver right here. And in this case, Kiv actually goes with a block and release out the backfield, it looks like, along with a flat route by the tight end. Now... The problem with both of those flat routes and really the clear out streak are that none of them have any potential to get open against man to man coverage out of this cover one defense from Joel. So really, the only two routes that can realistically get open are either the drag or the post. Now, in this case, Joel obviously is going to use her one of those two. And so whichever one he doesn't use her, you better hope that he gets that separation on his route from his man to man defender or else you're just literally going to have no options. So you're going to see right here snap the ball both flat routes covered by their man-to-man -man defenders as is the clear out streak joel drops to the post route the drag route has a couple of yards separation on his defender but that robber zone over the middle of the field is doing a good job of deterring kiv from throwing it by the time he kind of passes him through that defender has really kind of caught up and it's a tight window especially with the man-to-man -man defender out there on the running back as well in the area joel staying disciplined on that post route and so now Kiv really has nowhere to go, scrambling around, has to end up throwing it away. So, and that's kind of what makes it effective against this gun bunch offense, is you see a lot of those flat routes are on the most common plays out of this formation, and they're really useless against this cover one style of defense that Joel was playing. So this last sequence of plays is going to be two plays, one of which Young Kiv actually throws an incompletion, but he did have his receiver open with space on the sideline. He just got an unfortunate possession catch animation. And then the second one is actually going to be one of his three interceptions in this matchup. So he's going to be running that corner strike setup. Joel, once again, baseline press look. The man-to-man -man defender is standing about right here behind the player cam. He's going to be tasked with guarding T.Y. Hilton on that corner route. And now something you notice is that whenever people run corner strike to the short side of the field, that corner route, just the zones and even the man-to-man -man defenders defend it very oddly. It's very effective against those 91 zone defenders, and they just have a hard time getting in position and not getting like turned around almost. And that's exactly what you're going to see here. So he's got the outside leverage, got the outside leverage. Now on the cut, he actually gets turned around and kind of just loses all his momentum and has to completely shift back to the right almost like he over pursues and that's going to end up opening that window Kiv goes with the throw Hilton kind of jumps in the air if he'd got the animation where you know they kind of shuffle their feet on the sideline I think that probably would have been a catch but it ends up being incomplete but as you could see he definitely had the receiver open and that was a good way to attack that cover one style defense on that timing of the corner route. Now the second play of that sequence, and this is literally going to be the same exact setup on offense and defense from both players. The only difference is going to be that Kiv is now running corner strike still to the short side, but he's not on the hash mark. So I don't know if that has to do with how Joel's cornerback ends up playing the corner route this time. But as you can see at the snap, the cornerback still... He was in that baseline look, so has the outside leverage, but on the cut now, doesn't completely get turned around, does a good job of maintaining coverage on that corner route. And once again, we revisit the fact that these flat routes out of Gun Bunch are just useless against this cover one. Both are covered. He might be able to throw that tight end route, but as soon as he catches the ball, he's going to be getting hit. The backside in route is pretty blanketed. 
along with the fact you have Joel's user over the middle of the field, that kind of deters you from wanting to throw anything like that. So in this case, Kiv going to try and thread the needle once again to the corner route, because it looked open last time, and right here, Kiv's, or Joel's rather, cornerback ends up undercutting the route, picks it off, and almost takes it all the way back for a pick six, ends up getting tripped up by T.Y. Hilton right there. So as you could see, uh, Kiv had a tough time adjusting to that cover one. Now right here, the stats, Kiv against that cover one throughout this game ended up going 7 for 13 for 80 yards, one interception for a 40.54 QBR, which would be, you know, by far the worst in the NFL. Now Kiv against everything else that Joel threw at him, which was mainly DB Fire 2 along with Crossfire, was 7 for 14, 129 yards, 2 touchdowns, and 2 interceptions, good for an 82.14 QBR. So he more than doubled his QBR against everything else, and he actually threw those 2 touchdowns, uh, both against DB Fire 2 within the last 3-4 to four minutes of the game. And Joel actually went away from cover 1, called it 10 times in the first half against Kiv's passing plays, as opposed to only 3 times in the second half. So you have to wonder if Joel would have stuck with that cover one. Uh, the game ended up going down to the wire. You know, Kiv ended up winning this game 17-13 if Joel would have been able uh, to come out with the win. But that's going to be it for this video, guys. I hope you guys enjoyed. As always, thanks so much for watching. And until next time, take it easy.